you still have the, uh, you wouldn't have the HO, if you had negative, you still would not, you wouldn't have the uh, ethanol yet, correct? If you had the, uh, what do you mean by that? If you had the, uh, oh wait, no, you're right. You're right. So when you're this right. group leaves, then, yeah, it, it becomes an oxide, but then after it takes the proton, then it's ethanol. Yeah, okay. So at this point it's negative and at this point it's digital. attached, oh sorry, that's a good catch. The four should be attached to an ester group. Only one of the esters has disappeared. That's a good point. One thing I could have done that would make my life simpler is instead of always writing O carbon carbon, I could have just written this. This is a good habit on these Clayson condensations. This isn't doing anything in the reaction anyway, so this way I would be less likely to make those mistakes if I just used okay, some condensed notation there. Good catch. to use condensed notation of this. And again, we got a beta carbonyl ester, or a 1,3 dicarbonyl. You already knew this mechanism pretty well, and this time around we also got this last step. When the leaving group leaves, this oxygen doesn't like having a negative charge, and the negative charge would much rather be on this alpha carbon here because it's stabilized twice by resonance. So we have to do that step. And that means we have to do the second step of aqueous workup to get the neutral product, which is probably what we wanted all along. Good. So when would you use this in a synthesis? When you're trying to make a beta carbonyl ester. Notice that one of the esters is still an ester, and one of the esters is no longer an ester. This is no longer an ester because it's L group left. I don't know, where did the L group leave? This here is the L group leaving. However, the one that acted like the enolate, its L group didn't leave. So we've started, so the, in the Clayson condensation, one ester attacks another one, but you end up with only one ester group and one ketone group, say.
good, uh, doing good so far? Yep, I don't think you made any mistakes so far. You're using some good methods. So it's not the ring that's messing you up. It was, um, let, me see, let me see if I can figure it out here real quick. Well, let me give you a little help. Okay. Now, you have this alpha hydrogen, so you deprotonated oh, the alpha. I forgot to get rid of my leaving group, my ester. This is why I'm having Let's there. see. Actually, I, I don't think that's the problem yet. So we're, we're not ready for that yet. So let's see what we've done here. You've deprotonated the alpha carbon, and then you correctly saw that now it's going to attack the number six. Mm -hmm. The step that you left out is you left out this arrow. I think we had that problem on one of the previous problems as well. You showed your alpha carbon attacking the number six, but you didn't show that that would have to break the pi bond in this carbonyl, and that's why your picture isn't coming out right. Because if you don't break this pi bond, then the number six is exceeding the octet. At least that's, I think that's one of the problems that you're having in your okay, picture. I guess, so I, I guess I'll just skip some, I skip quite a bit of the mechanism. Hmm. Uh, well, I, this picture looks very good, except for that one issue with the number six carbon. So, so uh, if you just trust your picture and trust your arrows, um, you've almost got the right picture here. So, well, let me get caught up to where you are so far. So you saw this was going to be intramolecular, and we were going to form a ring. So we can count how many atoms will be in the ring. Well, if I start with the alpha carbon, that would be one. And then I know it's going to be bonded to the number six. So that would be one, two, three, four, five. And that's it. So you made a five-membered ring. That was very good. You decided to call this the number six carbon and this the number two, which means this is also the alpha carbon. 